There's a lot of changes in technology and training techniques out there now, but I still see athletes with hip, hip injuries, knee injuries. I see a lot of knee injuries as a result of a hip injury or a hip muscle inhibition. Um, I have an athlete that I've been training uh, or tr treating for muscle activation for, this will be in his third year. Um, he's a four-time Olympian and he's actually going after his fifth Olympics. His name's Hunter Kemper. Hunter came to me. Um, now he, he sees a lot of different folks for a lot of different things, but here's what none of them can tell him. Which muscles are working and which ones aren't and how do I train the ones that aren't? Everyone else was guessing. And so one of the things that um, muscle activation techniques has the ability to do is identify which muscles aren't. Because if you go off sensation, you're going to be very wrong with the result that you're going to get. Otherwise, all these athletes doing all this training wouldn't have knee injuries, hip injuries, back injuries. If it was the system was working, it would be working. But I don't always see that answer. And so when I started working with Hunter, all we were looking at is what is his range of motion restriction, the muscle tightness, which is what he used to stretch statically. I mean, force the joint to go farther than it would go and hold it there to release the tightness. Once I got Hunter to understand thank you, that the muscle tightness is only a symptom, and if you are treating the symptom, you are going to eventually not get to the cause and you're going to end up with a bigger problem. And so one of the things that we started looking at is how is he warming up the tissue and what is he doing to address the tightness. So when I have all this tightness in hip joint motion, it can be from certain muscles not able to contract and other muscles tightening down. Well, what happens is if I have muscles on the back that can't contract on the man, the muscles on the front are going to start to tighten. Um, so now this compensation starts to increase where more force is applied to one part of the joint because I've got tightness happening on one side of the axis and weakness on the other. So that changes how this joint actually sits and now starts to cause mechanical wear. Are oh, you from Chicago as well? Cindy, can you coach? Bring your back with your feet right there for me. Let's try this one together. I want you to just lock your knee and bring your leg up as high as you can go. Good. Okay. Take that leg and go to the other one. Whoa! <laughs> what happened there? Okay, do this one again. Does this one seem restricted compared to this one? Yeah, do you guys see that? So let's do it again. Bring this leg up as high as you can go. She stops right there. Go with the other one. Now, actually, she goes way past that. So I just want to see if there's something. Now, this can be a little more complex. Because if she has some weaknesses in her lower abdominal, which attach to the pelvis, this pelvis may not be stable from above, which will affect what happens to the muscles that attach to it from below. But I'm just going to go through some quick tests for muscles that bring her leg this way. Lock your knee right here, Gabriel. Hold that there. Don't let it move. Try that one again. Okay. Hold. Does that? Yeah, I can tell. Lock your knee. Hold this one. Good. Hold this one. Good. Do you feel the difference? Okay, so I'm going to speed this one up a little bit. So, Gabrielle, stay there. Now, did you know you had a weak rectus femoris? No, oh, I don't. Like, not that exact muscle. But you have, because Cindy said she's got some skaters that have had some hip flexor issues. Are you one of those? Yeah. No. Okay. Well, you are now. Because <laughs> you're in. <laughs> so, Gabrielle's rectus femoris right now is showing me it does not contract immediately on demand. So what I'm going to do is we're going to get this thing working a little faster. Now I have a couple ways to do this. One is what we call direct force application to the muscle attachment the tissue. That's me pushing on it. Once I do that, I'm going to follow up with and contract and sustain for six seconds. So you're going to resist me very lightly, Gabrielle, for six seconds on my count, okay? Contract your quad, lightly push, up, up. There you go. One, there you go. Perfect. Two, three, four, five, six. Relax. Take it again. Lightly push. Up. One, two, three, four, five, six. Relax. Lightly push. One, two, three, four, five, six. Relax. And lightly push. One, 
two, three, four, five, six. Relax. One more time. Ready? Push. One, two, three, four, five, six. Relax. Okay, get real. Tell me if this feels more solid to you. Lock it. Don't let it move. Ready? Hold. Good. Again. Ready? Good. That feel better holding that? Okay. We just did one muscle. Let's see how much range we have. But do this one first because that's the one that had good range. Good. So she's way up here. Show me the other one. No. So I changed her range. Did you guys ever see me do this? Muscle tightness is a purposeful communication from the central nervous system for muscles to contract to provide stability. The muscle tightness is a protective mechanism to prevent a joint from moving to a position that has been determined by the central nervous system to be unstable. Like when you step on ice or a slippery surface, your muscles will react by tightening up to provide immediate stability. Force static stretching to release the muscle tightness will temporarily improve range of motion. However, after the central nervous system detects instability, muscles will tighten back up to provide stability. By activating the inhibited muscles through muscle activation techniques, range of motion will be increased without compromising stability. Muscle tightness is not the problem, it's only a symptom. Are you continually addressing the symptom or fixing the problem? For more information on how to fix the problem, go to musclemechanicsmat.com. musclemechanicsmat.com